works on my machine. That's the ultimate thing that you really want to get, where the thing you run on your development environment is exactly what you run in production. And Docker is a great tool for doing that. You produce an image, and those exact bytes that are on your machine get copied to production. In theory, they run exactly the same there. I wanted to show you one scenario where it broke pre-commit CI uh, due to the exact bytes being in both places and the behavior being completely different. Uh, this surprised me, but I'm gonna explain how and why it happened and uh, hopefully you'll learn something. And um, yeah, I guess a little bit of background before we jump in and spoilers on this issue here. Uh, if you don't know, uh, pre-commit is a linter code formatter framework that I made and pre-commit CI is a hosted CI system that runs it really, really fast and auto fixes your pull requests for you. And I ran into this bug while doing a routine upgrade of the operating system and uh, Python versions. I ran into this interesting problem. So first, let me show you a very minimal reproduction of this. Uh, we need to make a particular tar file, and then we are going to try and extract that tar file using, in this case, just the base Ubuntu image. So first, we need to make a particular directory structure. Uh, the directory structure that I use involves a symlink. A symlink is necessary to reproduce this. So if we do touch y slash a and then ln dash s y slash a to y b. And if we look at the tree for that, uh oh, uh, this, b y. We need the symlink to actually be valid. It doesn't actually super matter in here, but anyway, this is our directory structure and we need to make a tar of that. So if we do tar dash czvf out dot tgzy, uh, we now have a tar file here. Cool, we have a tar, we have this. I am going to do podman pull Ubuntu Noble just to make sure that we are on the very latest version of Ubuntu Noble. And if we run this podman run rmti volume mount the current working directory to source in read only mode, Ubuntu Noble bash. And if we do tar dash xf, that tar file, it should succeed here. Uh, this is the behavior that I expect. Tar works, everything's great. You know, we look in our output here, um, we have the same directory structure as we had before. Great, everything is working fine. There are no problems here. This is, this is precisely what we expect. However, if I SSH to this other machine, uh, which uh, we'll do the same thing here, podman pull Ubuntu noble, Sure, we're on the latest version. Oh, actually, let's uh, let's copy the exact tar bytes over so that we're completely reproducible here. Out uh, TGC to here, uh, just to show SHA-256 sum of out TGZ and the digest of this image, uh, so that we have exactly the same thing here. H again, uh, SHA-256 sum of out.tgz, 6A12, yeah, 6A12. And we look at the digest as well. I've done a little prep work, so you don't have to see this all again. Uh, 7229, 7229. Okay, just to confirm, we have exactly the same tar file bytes. We have exactly the same podman image um, or Docker image. Now let's run that same uh, command as before and show that it, has different behavior. So we're gonna pod, again, podman run, rmti, uh, mount the working directory, read only, Ubuntu noble bash. We do tar dash xf out dot uh, source slash out dot tgz. We get some failures. I mean, we can ignore this, oh, because my clock is skewed. I don't know what's going on with my machine. This is actually really annoying. Uh, I keep checking this box and something keeps unchecking the box. I don't know why. So anyway, ignore these. This is not the problem that I'm trying to show here. This is the problem that I'm showing here. Cannot change mode to blah, operation not permitted. And so basically what's happening is I've taken the exact bytes of a file and the exact image and tar is behaving strangely differently. Now to understand this, and actually the, the complete hint to this was uh, actually pointed out by one of my Twitch viewers. Uh, one of my Twitch viewers, Sancho the Horse, <laughs> uh, pointed out this particular bug. But before I show you the contents of this, this bug, I need to explain a little bit about how Docker works. And I've actually covered this in a previous video. Um, and I guess when I say Docker, I guess generically I mean container runtimes, because I'm actually using Podman 
but it's roughly the same idea. The way Podman and Docker work uh, is they're not a virtualization technology. I mean, they are sort of, but they're not, they don't make virtual machines. Uh, with a virtual machine, like the one that I'm running here, and here, I guess, I have two of them running today, um, is an entire operating system, a full kernel, uh, and then a user space on top of it. You know, it basically boots a complete, a complete running computer. Uh, and booting a computer takes a while, and so you can kind of think of virtual machines as like a, a full computer, kind of slow. Containers, on the other hand, start up pretty quickly. Uh, and this is because they don't have a full kernel. Uh, they are just a user space that borrows the kernel from the running machine. So when I run a Podman container here, it has a user space, all of the software that's inside of that container, but it's borrowing the kernel from host machine. Well, not my host machine, but my virtual machine, which to, from its perspective is the host machine, but we're getting pedantic there. Uh, and so you may be able to take the exact same image and produce a container from it and run it on two different hosts with two different kernels and have two different sets of behavior. And that's exactly what happened here. <laughs> so despite you know all of the things being equal, uh, the kernel was different. And uh, actually, I believe it's not specifically the kernel, but a ancillary library that deals with uh, security permissions and stuff. I believe it's called libseccomp. And it was on a particular version where um, syscall produced a different error that Tar didn't expect and uh, therefore <laughs> produced this error. The craziest thing about this is uh, we went to debug this, spent several hours debugging this. I actually built Tar from source at the same version that's in this image here. And Tar, when built from source, did not have this bug. And that's because during the Tar build process, it particularly checks that this syscall behaves correctly and then adjusts the code uh, to avoid buggy implementations of that particular syscall. Uh, that particular syscall is, uh, I believe, FCH mod at two. FCH mod at two, yes. So um, yeah, basically it's been fixed in this particular version of libseccomp. Uh, Docker wasn't relevant for me here. I don't really know why that contributed to their bug, but it doesn't seem to matter. Uh, but it returned the wrong error, <laughs> and so Tar didn't know what to do, and then ended up having problems. They ended up fixing it in a newer version of libseccomp, and I believe it was backported, and I happened to be running, I think, an old version here or something, um, but ultimately, that's what the difference was here and resulted in user observable behavior despite having identical Docker images in both places. Uh, this was a really, really fun bug to debug. Uh, a lot of head scratching along the way, uh, but I'm glad that we finally figured it out and I honestly would not have been able to do it without this Twitch viewer. Well, I probably would have got there eventually, but this Twitch viewer definitely uh, helped shortcut to the answer after we had you know, started to, you know, I was going to bisect TAR because I initially thought, oh, it works in 34, it fails in 35. Surely something in between those was the problem here. But no, 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 it has to do with, um, the, uh, the libraries here. I guess the takeaway learning from this is uh, I'm going to make sure to upgrade my hosts before I upgrade my containers. You know, it's much more likely that software is backward compatible rather than forward compatible. Uh, and hopefully I will avoid this particular failure mode in the future. Anyway, hopefully you found this useful. If there are additional things you'd like me to explain, leave a comment below or reach out to me on the various platforms. But thank you all for watching, and I will see you in the next one.